Ladies and gentlemen, um, without goofing around here at all, since you've been very staunch to um, sit around for a little while, without any further ado, I would like to introduce to you Mr. Lenny Bruce. my act. Can you see anything offensive in that? <laughs> That's all I did that night at Aaron's. Just trip around, do my little dance, and somehow the press read into it. <laughs> Are you kidding? He is doing the old skip around number. What's that? What's that? It's a filthiest bit in show business. When he went like that, are you kidding? That is... <laughs> the most beautiful part. The... And whoever wrote that newspaper article is just so funny. What the old woman said, this will be the end of Aaron. <laughs> I really love you, whoever you are. This is... I guess it's like a little old lady sitting there crumpling a handkerchief. You know? This will be the end of Aaron. Now, that's, uh, it's all over. We had it in a... Yeah. I never read anything that any girl wrote that I liked. Girls are not good writers. Boy, does a chick can really write in that magazine that has the picture of Hansel and Gretel in front of it. What's it? Bounty. Is that the name of the magazine? Bullet. Patricia. Oh, what a good writer. And the cartoonist, uh, the artist there, he really captured me in that little dopey weird painting there. Um, and it was good reporting, too. Did you... Uh, the ad, uh, they didn't get it just the way I wanted it. It, it was... A, it, it related to uh, a quote that somebody in the university said, uh, the university should be the last to ban him. Which uh, is not the truth, because you know, it's, uh, as I said in the ad, uh, that kind of thinking is, I can't understand anyone who couldn't understand me, because I'm so understanding. <laughs> yeah. Yon lie the murderers, those dirty murderers, and I am pure and good, so I must murder the murderers. Now that I've got you in a good mood, I didn't have an asthma attack. It was false labor. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, I'll be very uh, truthful with you. I was waiting for the money. <laughs> this, is, this is really fantastic. This is honest to God, this is what happened. I said, uh, I am not your partner to the promoter. This is earlier today. I said, no matter what the box, I have a salary and uh, you meet the salary or that's it. And the reason a bond is put up in all performances before the performance is that if the promoter, then the house is triple packed, I don't get any more, but if it's nil, I still get my salary. So he's yelling at me, you gotta get down there and blah, blah, blah. He hasn't come to the theater yet, he just got to the airport, see. You gotta get down there, no, I want my money, blah, blah, blah. And I call him up, there's six people there. What? Then they got really paranoid, no, he's working for the promoter. I sent 15 people down, and I got 100 people there, 106, and I wonder what it is. This place is really down under. <laughs> that, what happened was I over-publicized. 
uh, that they this, this is a truly a failure. Yeah, not artistically, because I'm going to just really make you laugh your ass off. Just make you laugh, 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 laugh. Now, the night the obscenity was used, let me tell you something about that. The press damning me, they were qualified. It was a bad show. It really was. It really got heavy-handed, ponderous. And, uh, and the fact that he couldn't hear half of it, things were taken out of context. If I were to tell you a story about the wet pants man of the family, you'd say, well, that's all right for smoking rooms, but I wouldn't want to bring my lady fair to hear some joke like that about the wet pants man of the family. But I told you the wet pants man of the family was a diaper child that lost his father and he the mother left and this wet pants man of the family. Then it's a different wet pants man of the family. <laughs> and the thing that confuses me with the dirty words. The two areas that dirty jokes stem from, one scatological reference, toilet jokes. And if this were a toilet, and I would take this toilet, this dirty toilet, and boil it in zonite. Now we have a clean toilet. A clean toilet. Obscenity is a human manifestation. This toilet has no central nervous system. No level of the consciousness. It's a dopey toilet. I can't offend you with this toilet. Toilet can't do anything, you dumb toilet. But you and I are hung up with this toilet and embarrassed with this toilet. And the worst sound in the world is when this toilet flush noise finishes before you do. <laughs> the other area, the dirty jokes, are the bedroom jokes. And I don't do any jokes. I don't do any titillating ha-ha, you know what that means, that sly innuendo. Uh, I damn the people that will keep the lovers apart. It's not dirty, dirty, dirty. The four-letter words, which is gross misreporting because schmuck has six letters to it. <laughs> the classic illustration in semantics would be this. The society in my country, and yours too when you visit it, will say, this is clean and this is dirty, and then the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas. What is the attraction in Las Vegas that all of the purists support? Well, the attraction at the Stardust is the Passion Play. Well, they're consistent then. What follows the Passion Play? Well, they're having Eugene Normandy, uh, the New York City Ballet, Lottie Lenya, Monet exhibit. Is that the attraction that all support at the Taboo? What is the attraction? Tits and ass, I beg your pardon. <laughs> tits and ass, that's what the attraction is. Just tits and ass? Oh no, an Apache team and tits and ass. Well, that's why I got to see the Apache team. But that must be one hotel. What's the second biggest attraction? More tits and ass. And the third, that's it, tits and ass and ass and tits and ass and tits and ass. Do you mean to tell me that Life magazine would devote three full pages to tits and ass? Yes, right next to the article by Billy Graham and Norman Vincent Peale. Well, that may be the truth. Really life and time. Nugget, rogue, do, gent. Myriads of other stroke books. The antecedent to Playboy, National Geographic, or the African chicks in school, or look at this, many. Well, I don't know if you're telling the truth, but you just can't put tits and ass nightly up in a marquee. Why not? Why not? Because it's dirty and vulgar, that's why not. Titties are dirty and vulgar? How dare you arrest my mother for having her titty out in the subway? How dare you to tell me that my six-year-old daughter's titty is dirty or will be dirty? No, it's not the titties. You're not going to bait me. It's the words, the way you relate. I don't believe you. I believe you it's the titty that's dirty. Because I will change the words of the marquee to tuchus as a nay nays nightly. <laughs> oh, that's a little better. Well, I'll get very austere. Latin, glorious maximus and pectoralis majors nightly. <laughs> now that's clean. To you, schmuck, but it's dirty to the Latins. <laughs> well, you just can't put tits and ass up there, that's all. You have to have some, some rationalization. Okay, la nouvelle vague, la parisienne, French tits and ass, the follies, class with ass, I'll buy that. <laughs> follies, brazier is okay, unless I can have something, maybe, maybe something patriotic like the most American girls in the world. American tits and ass, Grandma Moses tits and Norman Rockles ass. <laughs> Norman Rockles ass, draw my ass and win a Buick. <laughs> and then I started thinking, what's the dirtiest word? The dirty, dirty, dirty word for children only. All right? The argument is this. 
that overemphasis of sex and violence on television is that your child will ape the actions of the actor. What he sees in these formative years later on, he will do. This is correct. I would rather my child and yours see then the stag movie over King of Kings. That's if I especially don't want my kid to kill Christ when he comes back. That's what's in that movie. And the stag movie? I don't know if you've ever seen any stag pictures, but no one gets killed at the end. <laughs> Nobody gets slapped around. There's no communist propaganda. There's no deterrent to life. Nothing but hugging and kissing. They're not horny pictures. Faggots usually make them. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a full letter word. I'm not going to look at you now. Because this way you can't arrest me. You don't know who said it. <laughs> the curtain said it. Ah, look at this curtain. I never had a curtain this big, ever. Whew. What if you had a dry cleaner? <laughs> now look, you'll dry clean this for pound and... Yes, any grapes you'll bring in, I'll dry clean. Any ones, that's right. Whew. Imagine bringing this to be clean. This. Uh, what'll happen with this? What'll happen this when it's sold the theater? Hmm. Will anyone buy this? Because it's cheap. Ha ha! A pegboard. <laughs> Just think. Tomorrow, Tuesday, weld. <laughs> and now a duck. That's the last you'll see of me. I get crazy in, in there. Well, these movie stars back here sleeping. <laughs> That's where they sleep back there. Oh, yes, the four-letter word. It starts with an S and ends with a T. The dirtiest word you've ever heard on any stage. The word is what? I can't look at you right away. I'm going to just say it and then I'll look at you. The word is snot. I said it. I know a lot of people are thinking out there now. See, so clever, but just for a cheap laugh, you'd say snot. Supposing I didn't say that for some cheap laugh. Supposing I could tell you something about snot that you never knew about. <laughs> something that was so unique as it... Is, is that the truth about snot? <laughs> yes. Did you hear that about snot? <laughs> it's documented, yes. Now, some people out there smug, we know all we want to know about snot, kid. <laughs> Even if it's real different. <laughs> hear this about snot. You can't get snot of a suede jacket. <laughs> Just try it once. Try to take that jacket and throw on the cleaners. Just stop him, okay? Get his wife, stand over there. Is this your jacket, son? Yeah. Son, you know what this is on this sleeve, don't you? Uh. Come on, kid. You want to go downtown? Uh. What's this on the sleeve? Snot. What's that? Snot. Son, you know you can't get snot off suede. It's a killer. Kills velvet. I know. What'd you try to throw it in here for? I don't know. Just... It's not my snot. Oh, yes, it is. That's yours. No, not. I mugged somebody. Yeah? All right. Well, old Jewish mother's a fool. That's, that's not there. I know it. Stop saying it. Stop saying it. You did it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Get it off. You can, I can. That's why I brought it to you. Well, you can flake it off with the... Well, you can flake it off with the black mark will always be there. Snot. <laughs> You've probably seen it in the back of cheap hotels, the back of the radiators. It looks like bar relief wood glue. That's the move. In fact, if you will pass up a Kleenex, there's one. Would you pass it to this gentleman who will pass it to me? What if the guy with cue cards? Then you really punch me after the show. It's Amelia Charlotte. But how old is that Patricia lady? About. Right, chick. This isn't a Kleenex. <laughs> Ladies don't have snot. Just arpege they have a little. All right. Here it goes. None of your comics would show you any snot. <laughs> Make-believe prop snot they show you. 
Beyond the Fringe. Is, did any of you see it? It didn't knock you out, did it? You know why? It's a, Peter Cook is a genius. It's, 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 it's beyond the fringe. It's not actor proof. The people are funny. You know uh, the scene where the four guys do uh, the uh, f uh, femme masculine men? The poof kind of things? Now, the funny bit. Uh, oh, by the way, any of the cast here? Are you? None of the cast are here? Yeah, because I, I wouldn't do it if you were here. And don't you tell them, because it'll just be cruel to offend them. No, really. You won't cop out. Uh, see, see P Jonathan and Peter are really guys, guys. They're not faggots. And probably the guys in Beyond the Fringe are faggots. So it's, it's not humorous when faggots do faggots. And when you see really a guy, Jonathan and Peter, with, oh, hey, looks funny, but ooh, then it's faggots doing faggots. And, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But this is humor. Yeah. I'm going to do it, don't worry. Yeah. Not if you yeah, want to go to the snotty promise to say. Yeah. The dream thing, I'll show you later. I said, all right. I did it. I did it, and I'm very well adjusted. Why am I well adjusted? Because I didn't look later. <laughs> we see the same fellow who is not well adjusted in slow motion. <laughs> A lot of people say, why don't you look later? Son, you've seen one, you've seen them all. <laughs> now I've got a handful of snot. That's what I got. Which hand is the M&M? &M? <laughs> what are you going to do with your handful of snot? I'm going to take it and... Um, I had an orchestra here, I'd put it here. And then the conductor would come back from the intermission. A note! Hmm. A request. I'm gonna do a bit for you. A bit, bit. A bit something I've recorded, that means a bit. Ah, I just got hung up looking at the lights here. There was garbage in these things. Everybody worries about That's just really weird. Somebody owns this theater and nobody cares about it. <laughs> you could really break something or do something. And so you're always worried about your stuff. Look, don't fool around my stuff. I keep my stuff neat and clean and you're there. I'm going in the service and I tell my mother to keep my stuff in my room and so on. I'm just schlepping in the dopey box with this stuff and doing this, this stuff. And it's really weird. And beyond the fringe, I fell right on the floor when he did that. Did it pay off as funny when they broke the bag? Whew, it was so silly. This is the Veterans Hospital. Okay. The bed is about a comedian. A comedian that thinks there's such a word as class. He's a comedian that's been in show business about 15 years and has never worked what he calls the classroom, the good room. He's got an agent. He's really bugged with his agent. And the scene opens up in Sherman Oaks, California. The pool isn't in yet, but the patio is dry. <laughs> and we hear the comic, the agent. I sound like Milton Cross now. In the second act of Lodge de Vizil, the tenor hands the Madame Adaga and sings Bill Hey, Bullet. Ah, uh, your mop, can I talk to him over here? Listen, I'm tired of working the toilets, man. Uh, I really had it, you know. I figured out that uh, Frank Marlowe, Jack Durant, everybody made it but me, Joy Bishop. And the reason I never made it, uh, look, you barbecued that crap later. Listen to me now. The reason I never made it, I never worked the classroom. And I got to figure out that my act is down pat now. I can work any crowd. Give me the crowd. I work to the musicians, I got the hip smoker reef a bit. <laughs> I work to Jewish people, I ain't has any tokus. I got my Jolson bit down, I murder them now. And I went to Palladium Theater in London. Hey, the Palladium. What are you kidding, you schlub you? That's a vaudeville house. It's a vaudeville house. Alan King played it. Look, I'm not going to argue with you. I want the date, we're finished. I can't keep going back to Montreal, that's it. <laughs> All right, you bum, you. you don't deserve it, but we'll get you the date. 
the change in the arcs, that's right. All right, now we go to the next day in the agent, and then the next day, and arguing and arguing, and in two weeks we dissolve and fade into, look, you schlub, I got you the date. You don't belong there, it's a classroom, but you open up the 19th with Georgia Gibbs, Bobby Breen, and Bruno Hauptmann's son. <laughs> They're going to bring in Jerry Lewis for three days because there's a new disease. He'll help everybody out. <laughs> Folks, help muscular dystrophy, because I invented it. <laughs> that morning, the rehearsal of Palladium Theater. All right, boys and girls, we're lining up here. Okay, the first act will be the Dunhills, all right? Da, 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 Fade into reds and blues. Up for Nick Lucas. Da, tiptoe through the tulips. Into Bobby Breen. Rainbow on the river. Sky is beating. Okay, Stinky and his bells. Hello, Stinky. All right, just take it for time. Watch the rhythm section. An epileptic. They put him to earth. That's marvelous. Smashing good. All right, Alonzo and his dog. Hello, Alonzo. All right, check the music here. Oh, how much is that doggy in the window? Da, 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 da. Okay, cue drummer, get ready for the cue. What do we do when we see Hitler? Dog lifts sleigh, crash down. Da, 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 da. The dog lifts sleigh, crash down. Da, 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 da. All right, George Gibson, get the comedian. Frank Dell. Oh, uh, the American comedian, you, the chap there with the mohair pinky ring. Come up here, son. Yeah, it's all right, that's him. Okay, lover till on. Da, 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 da. Talk, talk, talk. Oh, is he kidding with this crap here? Liberace. Oh, archaic. Christine, Joe Penner, have you been in a prison camp, son? Da, 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 da. Let's go up to show business, heaven or da. That night, the show, Empathy, that's what they call it. That magic kind of scene. Any of you hear an album called uh, Judy Garland at Carnegie Hall? Judy Garland's following comprised of a lot of drunken queens, camps. How I know this? I know a lot of friends of mine that are drunken faggots who go to see her. <laughs> Don't listen to the, uh, listen to the audience the next time you hear that album. It's really weird. Her bows are, she goes, there's a part of the record, Judy Garland at Carnegie Hall, where it goes, uh, she's really building, and it gets like strip music bows, like, Da, 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 really slow bows, and she goes, Don't you ever get tired? No! And then it got really weird and sort of sad. She, she says, Don't worry, I'll sing them all. I'll stay here all night. <laughs> then the part that really made me weep, she's because I never want to go home. Oh, Christ. I can see Sid left in the wings. <laughs> she never wants to go home. That's really strange. You know. Well, it's that kind of an audience that's cooking for Georgia Gibbs, and she's on, and she's got those people like this. Back for the bows. Now into the tribute to Sophie Tucker, Hello God number. For bows, finiculi, finicular. So the audience applauds in cadence. Dum, 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 dum. So any schmuck who's militant will do good. More numbers, more maudlin, saccharine, exploiting the dead in the Bible and the flag. Now for the encore. Upon encore, her strap breaks, nay nay jokes. Ha <laughs> ha, excuse me, folks. The comic waiting to go on two and a half hours. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice warm reception now for America's fastest rising young comedian and dean of satire, Mr. Frank Dell. <laughs> well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I just back from a funny little place in Nevada called Lost Wages. Hmm. You know, folks, the funny thing about working lost wages, I met a lot of weird people out there. Now, I walked into Liberace. Ha-ha, <laughs> Liberace. And Liberace, Sister Christine, ring-a-ding-ding, the army jokes, the motel jokes, 10, 12, 16, 18 minutes, nothing. The people are staring at him with hostility. Okay, folks, we're going to do a little bit here. You go up to Harlem, you know, you get the old marriage and a crazy and 1,500 people, an oil painting, just... Okay, but now the band is embarrassed reading Punch. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, because of his inadequacy, he vents the hostility on the audience. We got a lot of squares, Bill. Squares, that crap. Right. Well, folks, we're going to do a little number here. It's Mount Rushmore. Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln. Granite. Folks, we're going to do another little number now that everybody gets a kick out of. I'll tell you what. This number... 
I'm going to dedicate to a guy up in show business heaven. Jolly, I'm going to do the number for you, baby. If they don't like you, it's okay. Folks, if you want to knock up a guy that's dead, it's up to you. I'm doing a number for him, because I love him, and all the soldiers. If you want to go against me, it's all right. Ma, rock a boy, rock your putz daddy, he's had it. When that exploitation didn't work, back to the dressing room. Knock at the door. The house booker. Come in. Oh, dear, you're getting it all over. Excuse me, son. How do you do? My name is Val Parnell, and I'm the house booker here. And goddamn, they were grim, weren't they, son? I don't know what went on out there. You, uh, Georgia Gibbs was on, and, uh, and all of a sudden I heard that unnatural silence. And I came out there, and you, poor bugger, you were just trying your damnedest, but it didn't pay off. Uh, your stuff was good. That Hep Smoker Reefer number was quite unique, and, uh, all the Al Jolson impressions, but it just didn't pay off, son. Uh, in fact, I was thinking, the Hannon Swaffer, you know, the uh, critic, uh, we were talking, and he said, this boy's too damn good for this theater. Where was that expression you Squaresville? That was aptly put. They're too clever. My wife loved you. She's been to the Catskill Mountains and got all those esoteric Jewish references. But, uh, anyway, just for the time being, here's one idea you might like. There's a boat leaving Thursday. And, uh, I was wondering if you'd mind signing this release here. Sign what? Oh, what are you kidding? Sign it. You know, the kids out there. How the hell are you going to make kids laugh? I, gotta, I, gotta, I didn't do my uh, fag at the ball game yet. I got all my routines, the juggler and, uh, and the sculptor, and when I do the broad jugs and the... Uh... Oh, thank God, son. Uh... Look, I, I'm only a theater manager, but isn't comedy sort of... Not... It's just like painting, the plastic values, not a joke or a bit, but rather the totality. What? Look, never mind that comic crap. Now, look, you're not going to cancel me. You know what I mean? I got a million bits with the first show, and I want to tell you something. I got a hot temper, you know what I mean? No, wait a minute, you're not going to cancel me now for just a minute. You can't cancel me. I mean, uh, you can cancel me, but, uh, look, I hate to cop out like this, but, uh, uh, Look, I never, I never worked nothing but toilets my whole life, see? Uh, and my manager, he didn't want me to... Give me a break, okay? I don't want any money. I don't want nothing. Don't chuck me out after the first show. I mean, you play maybe 30, 40, 50 comics here. It don't mean nothing to you, but... Uh, they gave me a party in Cufflinks and Adam. Don't tell me telling you that for her. Look, I'll kill you. I really mean it. I'm gonna kill you if you cancel me. That's how much the date means to me. So you take it from there, okay, Johnny? Mm, God damn it, son, you're obsessed. You killed me. Yeah, me. How distressing. Well, if you think one show will do it, God speed. That night, the show. To some people, this traumatic experience would take three or four years to recoup. But he bounces up, had a good afternoon, gave his picture to the delicatessen to Nate, the greatest Swiss Army, and that's it. He's waiting to go on. Georgia Gibbs is on now, and she's really got the audience crazy. She's now doing the tribute to anyone in show business that ever made I. And he's waiting in the wings to go on. What does the matter with the road? Stop talking. Okay, I'll do my Pete Lori, then I'll do the other bed, then I'll do that. Maybe I'll open up with a sculpt then, huh? Hey, Pop, did I ever do this joke here with a guy who's Wait, now, Georgia Gibbs now takes a second encore. Think what Georgia Gibbs does for the last encore before the comedian. Can you give me, uh... Give me, uh, just kill all the lights except the one spot. Give me, like, a dramatic kind of light and, uh... Just one spot. Kill those. Kill. <laughs> I can't do those jokes, so that's better than that crap. That one, isn't that lovely? Yeah, I really like that. That's what I'd like from the theater coach. And just insist that the landlady let me put it in. It's just no room for anything. Yeah. Just to sit there. Not even sleep, it just fits in the room. 
A little too. Can you turn those lights out? Is there a way to? Why do we keep talking to these faceless lovers that, uh... Miss... That's what they are in court before the comedian goes on. He comes back and forth. Oh. Thank you, thank you. Oh, please. Oh, look how good you are to an ugly American. You know, I'd like now just a moment of silence before the wonderful comedian, Mr. Frank Dell, comes on. A moment of silence for the poor boys who went to Dunkirk. <laughs> I never came back. Lights all over since you went away. A moment of silence for all of the Johnnies that Dalton Trumbo will never hug. Roses are shining on Picardy. Where are the boys that will never see a walk again? Ah, go follow that. You can follow that with some guy beaning his mother with a kangaroo with a rake in his mouth, but it's just forget it. The whole audience is really in a myopic state and crying and throwing up and it's, for bows, Rahman and off Isle of the Dead. Funny off. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's comedy time. Come on, you crybabies. Come on, we all lost a boy at two in the service. All right, it's comedy time. Here is Frank Dell. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I just came back from a funny place in the bar to call Lost Wages. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I just came back from a funny place in the bar to call Lost Wages. Hmm. <laughs> you know, folks, funny thing about working Lost Wages, hmm. You meet a lot of weird people out there. Hmm. 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 Into the toilet for good. Chunk. <laughs> folks, we're going to do a little number here now. I know, it's ridiculous. Two people jumped out of the balcony, and one woman had a miscarriage who wasn't even pregnant. Okay, folks, come on there. Uh, come on, cheer up, you limeys. What are you, kidding? I was in the service, too. Uh, I think you get a kick out. I get a dry sense of humor. Now, the manager is watching him in the wings. We know, little baby, why don't you pop a walk, you fruit, you? <laughs> Let me do my act, all right? The manager's a real wacko there. You're all right, but watch the box office, okay? Uh, we got another little bit here, folks. You know, he's really getting dizzy. Out of left field, he does Georgia gives his tunes, nervous. We're going to do another little bit here. Hey, when's your copper walker? Do me a favor. Uh, here's the number that always goes over, folks. And uh, I did this the last time I did a show at the hospital. Uh, screw Island. How about that, huh? They really bum-wrapped you, the Irish. Screw the Irish, gang. How about it, huh? A uh, heckler in the balcony. That's the funniest thing you've said all night, boy. That's right. Screw Island. Uh, take it easy, Buster. That's just a joke, you know. Bust your ass, screw the Irish! The manager, what's going on out there? Screw the Irish! Get that bum off the stage. Go to the news, you'll get him off. Screw the Irish! Now take it easy, screw the Irish! Everyone screw the Irish! Get off the stage, go to the news, you'll get the bobbies back, folks. <laughs> screw the Irish! Get him off, rip the seats, get him back down to the dressing room. Knock on the door. Dow's Booker. Phew! Goddamn son, you're a bloody mow mow. I don't believe what went on out there. You destroyed the second balcony. Dear me, Robert Rock really missed something with you. I don't believe what you did out there. You changed the architecture, the oldest theater in London. Oh dear, we'll get you out of the country some way. Julian Elton left a wig in the closet many years ago. Dear me, here, there. Sign the release here and just a minute. What? Did I hear just a minute? Just a minute for what? The return of the Crusades? Look, Bomo, you stunk it up out there. Wait a minute, this is... Maybe I'm confused. Is this the kind of act you do? This Detroit race riot of yours? Son, if I came back this afternoon and I said, Look, you're not funny. Everyone in the whole world is funny and you're not funny. That's cruel, you see. But, son, the world is filled with unfunny people and you're one of them. Now, you sign this release or I'll black your eyes. Now, just a minute. Son, uh, you don't use narcotics, do you? Because that's the only rationalization I can. You could be oblivious to the cacophony of sound that went on out there. You just stunk it up. You're not funny, that's all, you leper, you. Now, sign this release here. 
Now, just a minute. I didn't do my spicy blue risque number. Get my digitalis quickly, Freddy. Spicy blue risque number. What was this schmutz that you did out there? What was that delightful bit of mime? What was that... Uh, what, 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 what was that bit you did for the women and children? What was this supposed to mean, table for one, mister? Uh, that's the bit. Uh, the bit is probably... Uh, Part me, part what I see. Uh, it's all my humor. I'm a, I guess, a reporter on what I've seen. I work just enough of those theaters, the boom, 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 and have seen uh, enough of those acts, those good kind of acts that really do all the benefits for those kind of chicks. You know, I do benefits for all these wonderful crippled children. I have two children of my own. I never see them. They're not crippled. You understand. Religion, that's the answer. Whew. Billy Graham did good here. I wonder why I... He didn't do good with me. Did he build anything here? Did he leave any edifice of Christianity here? Did he leave a tree here? Did he leave a building? Did he take all the money with him? Yeah, he shouldn't have done that. Do they have YMCA's here? They're really, that's the true edifice of Christianity, YMCA. I really like that. It's really weird. It's, it's too bad that uh, there are no Christians that uh, are actively Christian. Uh, a lot of people will say to me, how come you got the jacket? Well, I was a Catholic priest for four years and quit. The reason I quit is uh, Catholicism is correct. But I, you talk to a lot of ex-priests, they'll tell you the same thing. The confessions are a bore. It's really the same trite story week after week. Maybe one out of 50 are sexually stimulating, but that's about it. You know. I just get to the horny part and get out of here, that's all. That's all. Do you know... Uh, it's really weird. I, I just think, man, it's something. I, I'm not a communist uh, because I don't know anything about communism. And I don't think I'd like communism. Uh, but I am not obsessed with that. Uh, most of my friends that have access to newspapers are, apparently. And I notice in England and in Australia and Canada, you don't really hate the Russians the way the newspapers do. There. They're really nuts with it. You, or maybe you do know. And I said about a year ago, I said, watch, we're going to attack Cuba. And you can't justify that. Now, Castro, I spent a lot of time in Havana. Here's the fink that Castro is. He ruined it. Havana was a beautiful place, and since Castro came, no longer can you get narcotics and abortion or prostitution. <laughs> That's what he did in. There was that fear kind of thing. Uh, here's why I did capitalism over communism. A capitalist system is a good system. Here's how it works. If that chick that got up at Aaron's that night and said, hey, I'll do something new, do something new, let's have something new. In a communist form, well, the capitalist form especially, I can resolve the whole conflict with her by saying, you're a tub of crap, madam, and good night. Or say what I did say that night to her. And all she can say is that I'll never go to Aaron's again and that little old lady with the polar dance says it'll be end of Aaron's. <laughs> but that actress can go somewhere else and I can work somewhere else. But in a communist society, that is kaput. Communism is like one big phone company. I am screwed. When I tell the phone company, look you, I'm fed up with you, I'm going to the other. Phone company, that, uh, which one's that? The one with the Dixie cup and the thread. Yeah. That's why communism can never work. And for the dumb reason that they attack it, that they are godless because we are godless. We exploit our god and work him to death. So, the communism is no good because it just can't happen, can't work. Not with one person behind the desk, because there is no fair. 
It's Anzio. And that 88 and that 20 millimeter just whacks that guy in the back of the head and he's sucking up mud and blood at Salerno. And you're going to jump for that LCT and there's that guy there and you say, well, I'll take a chance. And you run and go pow and you get it and flop. And you lose a leg. And get him back to the LCT and he lives and you lost your leg. Now it's 20 years later and you're still gimping around. And the both of you, about 17 at the time, now this guy is the Supreme Court judge. You go up to him and say, um, hey, you remember me? Damn right I remember you, you saved my life. Well look, my kid is coming up before you and he killed this gas station standard. He deserved it, so all right. That's what I'll tell him. I'll let him go like that, because he's my friend. And I know that in school, my report card, he got 90. Isn't that 90 wonderful? He's gonna get a bicycle and I accept him and love him and kiss him, he's gonna get 90. And if he get 90 next month, that's the first lie that I tell. Because I tell you that I hope you get 90. But my 90 isn't worth anything unless you get 20. But I lie to you. I hope you all win. No, I hope you lose. Otherwise, I'll never get hugged and kissed. The protest is this. You should teach your child what is, is correct. That is truth and beauty. This is what is. This is what always has been. Not this is what should be. What should be never existed is a terrible lie to tell your child that he shall be frustrated and, and try to live up to the what should be. I want to be that good man. But the good man never was. So it's a lie man. It's a bad man. This is the man. This is the good man. The man that always existed. The Lone Ranger is a true Jewish mother. That's the what should be man. The fantasy man. The man that's so good, the Lone Ranger, that he never waited for a thank you. He always helped you and took the silver bullet and split. Hey, what's with that schmuck? You didn't wait for coffee or nothing. That's a Lone Ranger. So what? My mother stayed up all night and baked and everything. He don't accept love. He'll never wait for thank you. Not even thank you? He don't want nothing from nobody. You don't know his story? There's a good-natured guy. He's a Corpus Christi image projected. He loves you and does it all for you and doesn't want anything in return. It's amazing. He's been doing it for years. In fact, there's a lot of places we don't need him anymore. He comes out with a mask and we know him. It's all snotting off a shimmer that the mask is. We know who he is, but he likes the fantasy. And we go, this is what he really loves. We go, what do you got a mask on? Are you an outlaw? And he goes, flips out. He goes, I'm an outlaw. <laughs> I'm some outlaw, brother. That's terrific. Well, who? No, I'm an outlaw. Never mind. I'm an outlaw. <laughs> I'm an outlaw. That's all. I'm an outlaw. Well, what? No, no, I'm an outlaw. That's all. I kill and hurt people. <laughs> That's terrific. And he takes a silver bullet and leaves. He did leave the bullet one time, yeah. How come he left that bullet? You know the innuendo is Dr. Ehrlich, the magic bullet. What? 606. Dr. Ehrlich. Syphilis. What? I told you, he's telling you in a sly, subtle way that the whole world has syphilis. That's why he doesn't want any part of you. Take the bullet and leave it and doesn't open up his mouth. And he rides away. Are you kidding me? That's a slap in the face. I told you, I'd like to help you. The whole world's got a dose and he laughs his ass up and rides away. Are you kidding with that? Ambush him, find out. Don't you move, you psychotic. Hold his gun more. Mask me, what's your goddamn story? What the hell's your story? You too good to accept love? Look at these kids, he made up a humantosh. Made up a song, thank you, Lone Ranger. You're too goddamn good, aren't you? Too good to accept love from little children. There's your hero, boys and girls, the man that can't accept love. Why don't you tell the children what your story is? I'll explain if you get your damn hands off me, you barbarians. The reason I never wait for thank you, you... Come over here. I sent the boys to college. What's that? That's right. That's right? Let me hear that once again, mass man. I said I sent the boys to college. Well, damn, now, the mass man's a Jew. Of course, schmuck, that's been talking to the radio. That's all you heard, right, in the radio. I don't open up my mouth. If you switch it to 78 speed, you I will soon bear. I don't want nothing from nobody. Some Christians are coming. All right, sir, same. The reason I never wait for thank you, supposing once I wait for thank you. Oh, thank you, mass man. 
What's that, son? Thank you. You know, son, I've never waited for the sound of thank you before. I really like it. Can I have it once again? Oh, look, I'm not going to kiss ass all day. What the hell? Thank you, and that's about all I can give you. But I've had my first thank you. Now I'm doing things for thank yous and presents. Every week, presents and thank yous. A whole year of presents and thank yous. What happened this week? Get the Lone Ranger. Not in, you won't get over that without a thank you. The masked man, that's right. He wants thank yous now. Hmm. This week, I didn't get one present or one thank you. Why? The Messiah returned. What? The Messiah returned. You see, men like Jonas Sork, Lenny Bruce, and Jagger Hoover, these men thrive upon unrest, violence, and disease. If the Messiah returns and all is pure, these men stand in the bread line. You mean, yes, without polio, Sork is a putz. And the Mafia supports many Christmas trees for Jagger Hoover. Well, then... I'll make trouble, because I must have my presence and thank yous. In this way, what I don't have, I don't miss. Well, that's why I always ride off. Well, damn, Mass Man, it's a pretty good story, but what the hell, can't you, just for these kids here, make an exception, except one present? All right, I'm making a mistake, but for the children, give me that Indian over there. Tonto? Whatever the spit half breeds name is, Tonto, yes. Spit half breed Damn, masked man, you little rank, ain't you? I can't give you a human being. You can't. Why not, Putz? Did you think I was going to ask for an ashtray? <laughs> you made the deal. That's what I want, that Indian. All right, what the hell we made the deal, I guess. What do you want him for? To perform an unnatural act. <laughs> to what? You are need to perform an unnatural act. Masked man's a fag. <laughs> He's a fag. <laughs> Oh, Lordy, he's a fag. Ah, masked man is a fag. I never knew you that way, masked man. I never did. I swear to God, I didn't knew you that way. Well, I'm not, but I've heard so much about it. The repression sort of has me interested, and I... You know, I like what they do with homosexuals in all the countries. The punishment is quite correct. They throw them in jail with a lot of men. Very clever. <laughs> Wash them up and get them ready. And I want that horse, too. The wood. The act? The horse for the act, that degenerate. He's twisted, that fag. Oh, dear me, masked man, I swear. The horse for the act. Hmm, Gillian McIntanto. <laughs> That's it. That's right. That's right, Kimo Sabi. That's how Ben, his mother and sister, got leprosy. They didn't put paper on the seat. Mm. Hmm. I want to tell you so many things, but I sure don't want to get arrested. Hmm. I'll tell you. I'll call all of you. I had all sorts of really good fantasies. They, <laughs> I thought of one thing. Uh, let's say that, let's make, uh, I'll change the four-letter word to um, kill. That's the word, kill you. But you know what it is. So I think what I was going to do, you know, I was going to get a dummy and have an indestructible tape recorder sewn inside him. And the curtain would open up and you'd hear, kill you, kill you, kill you. Get up, shut up, Andy, take an axe. Kill you, kill you, they can't stop it. Carlo, Carlo, or very slow. You blah blah blah. You think, and I gave it the heart. Oh, it gets really just ridiculous. And now the movie starts. And uh, the title is very misleading. It's called The Magic Christian, a wonderful book, and uh, it's really funny. Terry Southern wrote it, and that's what it's about. A millionaire, a guy grand, who just puts everybody on. Yeah. Then I thought, well, maybe I'll uh, work a nudist colony, but you wouldn't go there. Then I thought, is it against the law for nudists to perform? And I think there's some kind of uh, law where if you don't move, and I would just be delighted, about, about 50, 70-year-old women with pendulous breasts singing, you know, tiptoe through the toilet. It's really, it's absurd, you know. Or in a, a plane, because they don't own up. You have a plane just hovering over, yelling all sorts of obscene things. You know. My wife and I have been married for 33 years. She's still undressed in the closet. 
She's bawling some guy in the closet. See, to me, the trouble with the repression. And the newspaper men would do well to heed this, because you have the access to the files. Do me a favor, please. Check out, for the last five years, the sex crimes in this country. Check out the background. Paul Groninger is a columnist in Chicago called uh, Paul Malloy. Right, it's a column. Okay. Hugh Hefner, the owner of Playboy magazine, sent me an invitation to the Playboy Club. I didn't show my children the pictures of the half-nude bunnies that Hugh Hefner sent to my house. Now, I would be facetious if I would ask him, why wouldn't you show your kids the pictures of the half-nude bunnies? Because I know that my mother's body is dirty. Your mother's body is dirty. That's why you're not going to see any pictures of my mother, your mother, nude or half-nude. But what it brings about is that kid, Christ, how erotic can it be that my father would go on public record to suppress it? That I must see it. It's that erotic, and when I see it, I will kill it. If any chick in this audience had any grief for some guy ripping their shoes off to look at their big toes, I am certainly not pro-nudist, because it's absurd and silly. I don't damn it. But it's very interesting that Hitler suppressed the nudist, because he noticed the nudist, that the birth control rate dropped. It's haste. It's like, you don't love me. You just want to have me. Any chick ever tell you that? Any lady ever tell you that you don't love me, you just want to have me? Because if you love me, you'd drive me to the seashore. You'd read to me all night. But you certainly wouldn't want to do that to me. Would you want to do that to anyone you loved? Is that an arm and an arm? Is that another pillow that's not obsolete? Is that true togetherness? Is it filthy, dirty, rotten, and mean? When I hate you, what's the colloquialism? When I really hate you, screw you, mister. If it was a Christian act of procreation, correct? I would say unscrew you, mister. Or really unscrewed him in business. Then the argument is, well, that's all right, your body's not dirty, but what's the sense of running around your tits flopping about? The sense of it would be that if you show off Monet, Miro, the greatest artesian god, why would you suppress his works? I would say in another 50 years, when the shuls have gone bye-bye, what, what are abos? Uh, that was really perceptive of the chick. She said, you know, when we went to the area talking about segregation, about the abos. Aborigines, they, do they ever come into town? There's none here tonight, though, are there? <laughs> do, is, are they offended if you call them abos? What do they speak? A dialect of their own? It's so funny when I hear Germans talk English here with a British dialect. That's what you're going down there, you bloke. <laughs> it sounds funny, doesn't it? I thought that bloke there. All I, know, all I can see about Aborigines is, I think, in National Geographic, and they're drinking water, like this. Yeah, that's some shot of the drink in a muddy kind of terrain. They're always worried about them drinking. Any tribe, wherever they are. I don't let them drink. I don't drink. I get crazy when they drink. <laughs> they're getting crazy, but they all get together. We're going to get crazy tonight, you really drink it. All right, uh, here's cheers. You're not going to get crazy, are you? <laughs> Well, I'll just get crazy a little, and then I'll get it over with. Uh, don't get crazy all the way. Uh, equality. Damn equality. When the mystic whispers in my ear, you, Lenny Bruce, that fierce fighter for integration, would you like a slave your very own? Well, uh, a white one, not a colored one. I won't whip them or nothing. I just want somebody around. I'll just whip them once in a while. Not in the head or nothing, just smack them hard in the ears. And it's... You know a group, and if I find out in this country they haven't assimilated, then I'll just die. Gypsies. Are there any gypsies in this country? On the window? Don't tell me they live in stores. 
Do they rent empty stores to live in? Oh, that would be really weird. But still, they don't assimilate. There are no gypsies here tonight, are there? Did you see a gypsy in the market today? Were you in the service with a gypsy? Did you ever knock up a gypsy? What's with the gypsies? They just won't mix. They never run for office or anything. They won't do anything. And in the States, see, there's, they always live in empty stores. And you always know you're going to make out with the chicks because there's no guys there. That's a beautiful cliche. Whenever I cheat on my wife, I always tell her. Because I'm an honest guy and I just can't help it because I'm very truthful and I like to hurt my wife. <laughs> Never cop out. Ever, ever. Not if you love her. Because just the same way, I don't know anything about chicks. Boy. They are really mysterious creatures. All of a sudden they get quiet. What's the matter with you? No, oh, nothing. What are you so quiet for? I'm not quiet, I'm saying... These are the danger sounds, boy, with your old lady. <laughs> Here's really danger time when you start to hear, I'm just bored. What do you want to do? I don't know, just something. I mean, something. Well, what do you want to do? I don't know, just, I don't, I don't know what I want to do. I just, just don't worry about me. I'll bet you that the ego is this good. And if you really do love, love your old lady, here's something they don't know about, guys, that you can idolize your wife and be on the way home from work and have a head-on collision with a Greyhound bus and 50 people dead on the highway, a guy makes a play for the nurse. How could you do a thing at a time like that? I was horny. How could you be horny? Your foot was cut off. I don't know. I just said, How could you be horny? You were dying. I don't know. She got a cute key store. I don't know. I Never cop out. If your old lady walks in on you with some chick, deny it. Flat out deny it and she'll believe it. And she'll believe it. I don't know, this chick gave me a sign around her neck laying top me. I'm a diabetic. I'll drop that. I don't know what to do. I was saving a life and that's all. That's all. Yeah. Don't believe it. I'll believe it. I believe, believe you want to believe your daddy. You're the only one. You're, she, my wife has been married before. First time for me. Uh, but I'm the only guy. I really knock her out. She's... Well, how about the first marriage? Well, um, they were just, uh, it was annulled. The mother slept in the bedroom with him. They weren't even married for two days. They were kids. And... Second marriage? Well, he was in the service. Uh, he was overseas all the time. She just saw him once in this country in a parade. I'm going with this guy now for about 16 years. He wants to marry me, but he can't. Why not? Well, his wife is Catholic in the insane asylum. Oh, well, that covers it all pretty good. That's all. He got custody of his children. He loved his children. I cannot believe that he loved his children. I have a daughter that I love. But I only really started to love her about a year ago. She's six. And because of a weird chain of events, my wife was physically ill. I ended up raising my kid. But up to about a year, she was really a bore. And I'd always have housekeepers and women 60, 65 living with me. And I used to wonder, after 20 minutes, it's not boring, I want to get out of the house. But then I would just schlep her to the zoo and take her all around, and we'd be walking and everything. It's just so boring to myself. You're not intellectually stimulating. How do those other fathers hang out with you all day long? Do they really like that? Is Dagwood a fantasy? Hmm, I don't know about that. I believe a child is a woman's thing. They understand that. That's why they dressed them up. So I went out and... I know what custody is. Custody means get even with your wife. This is, this is the greatest get even device. Just get even with her, I'll get even, I'll get custody. That tramp, I got custody. What do you mean she's a tramp? Does she go in the woods and roast potatoes? And... She sleeps with guys or that filthy thing. She does it in front of the kids. I discussed that. Well, I don't care, she's a tramp and I got custody. I like that woman with a malocclusion upside down that said, I thank the judge in the paper today. That dummy. The judge is right. How can the judge be right? The judge is so out of whack from constant exposure that he can... Oh, ha! Dig, that was a great device. The newspaper put my story right under the sex maniac. The university. 
That was really good. I liked that. <laughs> I mean, a sex maniac. I mean, a sick comic fool. The thing in that article that really was terrible was the judge, they put on the papers that he should never be let out. Oh, you know, it's, um... If I did a film that could change the world, supposing I could get the cross-section, what represents solidarity in this country? What represents the most bizarre debauched? What represents... Then we get to 24 cross-sections. Now I go to these 24 people and I tell them, look, we're going to have a thing called Ban the Bomb. And I want to give you people $10,000 a piece. I want you to sit in this big house and we're going to discuss things and I'll take what you would say down and sign this.